Yeah. Hello, Folk and Flick. Hello, real and imaginary friends out there. The one or two of you who are gracing me with your attention. I appreciate it. Uh, I was thinking about the last video I did, so in the future I want to make a video about what we're all going to do when we don't have any work to do. <laughs> I'm not going to elaborate. So, um, uh, yeah. So I'm Buliam T, and I'm an alcoholic. No, I don't want to be funny because it's a serious thing. And, uh, you know, I grew up with alcoholics. I grew up in a very alcohol-heavy culture or cultures. <laughs> Ireland, the United States, Japan. Heavy drinking places like Hong Kong. And, uh, you know, where social life revolves a lot around drinking. And I think over the years, the one thing that saved me from becoming a raging alcoholic and having cirrhosis of the liver right now at my ripe old age is exercise. So I was interested in a few sports. Uh, when I was younger, I did all kinds of sports. And then gradually that turned into cycling. And I did Aikido for a while and different martial arts stuff, but I wasn't ever, you know, competitive or anything. In Japan, I did Aikido because that's what people do. <laughs> Gaijin go there and then they study karate or, or uh, Kyudo or Yabusame or, you know, one of these martial arts or different japanese -y things like the tea ceremony or whatever. So I did a few of those things. I was in Kamakura for a while, so I was interested in Kyudo and Yabusame. And uh, uh, Yabusame is, is archery off of horseback. No. I didn't do it. I, I tried it. It's really hard. Uh, and uh, Aikido, you got you probably all know what that is. Um, uh, Kudo is is just arch archery, and I still like archery, so I still do that. But you know, the high impact sports, you get older, you don't do that anymore. And so I really loved racket sports. So a little bit of tennis. Not so much, but where I was living, I always had access to racquetball and squash courts, so I liked to play that. I was never competitive or very good at it, but it was fun. And I did it a lot, you know, several times a week. I also cycled a lot, which was good. And then I would have these other sport things I'd do uh, with groups like badminton or play basketball or, or soccer. Um, yeah, just always doing something. So I always had somewhere to go after work that was physical activity, and that deterred me from wanting to go hang out at the bar with everybody. I had something to do, I'd go do it, and then I'd be tired, and I'd go home and I'd drink a lot of water, you know, and go to sleep. That didn't mean that on certain nights of the week, you know, hump Wednesday or whatever, I didn't go out in Tokyo and eat... Uh, yakitori and drink a whole bunch of kidding beer or you know uh, which I did <laughs> more many times uh, there was just so many fun things to do and you would start by having some beers and having some food and then you'd go on from there sometimes the drinking sessions went on too late and it always hurt so I'm not perfect I have a temper but it's I'm not a violent person when I get angry, it's usually at myself, uh, so I'm mad at me. I make a mistake or something, and I get really, really angry at me for about 30 seconds. Sometimes that goes for five minutes, very rarely longer than that, because I've learned over the years that it, anger just doesn't help. So you have to calm down, evaluate what you did wrong, and then try to see if you can learn from your mistake 
and do better next time. So, yeah, alcohol, big deal, you know, and every time you wake up with a hangover and you miss a day because of alcohol poisoning, it's a terrible thing. You're, you know, you're thinking, well, I'm in bed reading because I can't move because I drank too much. And if you add up all those days over 63 years, you think, oh, my God, this is terrible, you know. But then I remember that that was balanced out with other things. So I'm very fortunate that I wasn't the type of person that was hiding little bottles of vodka around the office so I could keep my buzz on. I've known a lot of alcoholics. I grew up with alcoholics. Uh, it's a rough thing. It's really, really rough. So anybody who really has a serious problem, uh, pathology with alcohol, please, please get help. And always understand that there are lots of friends in your life that love you and want to help you, but you have to ask for help. You can't just sit around and expect people to help. And then you have to do the work. Don't ever stop asking for help, but... You'll frustrate your friends if you never do the work to try to help yourself. Uh, and that might mean rehab or therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy or AA or whatever. Anyway, church, you know, whatever your, your preference is uh, to help yourself, help yourself. Well, I say I'm an alcoholic because I'm a user and I still enjoy it. I still find a great deal of social utility in it. So if I go somewhere uh, to meet friends and we have some beers, it's always pleasant. Uh, I did a trip with good friends of mine last year in Douro. And, you know, <laughs> we, we beat ourselves up because we were wine tasting and eating all day. And that becomes very hard on your body. <laughs> so it's not fun anymore. So my suggestion to people for responsible drinking and consumption in general is to moderate big time. So uh, eat when you're hungry and drink when you feel like it and then stop. Because, you know, I'm paying for this vacation. I have to drink morning, noon and night because I want to taste the wine. It's not going to work for you. I, I don't think it works for most people. But anyway, uh, your mileage may vary, but I think if I were going to do something like that, again, I would tell the guy or I would make an itinerary for myself that included one fancy meal a day where I was going to wine taste and drink wine and leave the rest of the day for whatever I felt I needed or whatever we felt as a group we needed if we got hungry or if we wanted a bottle of wine or wanted to stop and taste because it's really tough to go for a week of just gourmandizing. I don't know how people do it, actually. I have friends that can drink a lot of beer every day. And I don't know how their metabolism works, but it just, I can't do it. I just get to a point where I feel just clogged up and inflamed. And, you know, cort cortisol is just flooding my veins and it doesn't work. So I have some rules that I kind of stumbled upon in my behavior uh, that seem to work for me. I don't follow them all the time. You know, sometimes something is really, really fun and you just start binge drinking. And, uh, you know, so I'm going to start with this thing I found on the web, uh, which I think is ridiculous. First, I'm going to have a sip of coffee. So, um, you know, I would never follow this for, for my reasons. But anyway, let me tell you what they say. Stay with the same group of friends the entire time drinking. As a, as a rule, that's probably a good thing because it's safe. You have people you know watching your back. So I would definitely agree with that one, especially if you go out in unfamiliar territory. Um. But for me in Japan and for my friends, any one of us could wander off at any time. People would say, where did he go? I mean, never mind. He'll show up somewhere. He's a, he's a big boy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you just find something interesting or you want to go to a pub that has different music and 
Uh, we didn't always, you know, operate as a unit when we were out drinking. Uh, with colleagues, that was different. That was more obligatory. And obligation is a big thing in Japan. In, in Ireland, too, you know, you go to the pub with friends, you leave with friends. Um, you don't wander off. I'm talking about urban drinking, Hong Kong, stuff like that. So use de designated drivers, definitely. One thing that helped me drinking in Tokyo was I rode my bicycle everywhere. So if I wasn't too impaired to ride my bicycle, you know, I had some drinks, but I wasn't completely, you know, wrecked. I could still ride responsibly. I'd ride home and I'd burn off most of the sugars and the alcohol by the time I got home. So by the time I un unwound and went to sleep, uh, there was no heavy sugars or alcohols in my system. I guess I'd metabolized it, burned it off. So I could go to sleep and wake up the next morning, no hangover. I'm just fine and sleep well and all that kind of stuff. Exercise helps balance a lot of things. It's really good preventative medicine to have a habit of exercising every day. And if you can't do it every day, you know, at least a few times a week, I would say. I'm not an expert in any of this, okay? I curate, that's what I do. But, you know, I do post health stuff and exercise stuff at Globe Hackers uh, Facebook page. And, you know, if a lot of things there annoy you, don't worry about it. Just scroll through because I post a variety of things and uh, you don't have to read them all. You know, you can cherry pick. But, uh, uh, it, you know, we all know where information is. My curation is no big deal, but I do it. I can't help it. I'm an addict. I'm a curaholic, curationalholic. So anyway, eat before and during drinking. I would definitely say that's a good thing to do. You know, in my culture in the olden days, uh, you wanted to be drunk before you ate because, you know, you needed your attitude adjustment before you even socialized. So, you know, you're going to have some alcohol before you even meet somebody. Uh, I also didn't need to do that. I remember a, a girl I went out with in, in Japan when I was young and we went to a disco and I hadn't had anything to drink and I was dancing and having a good time and she said, Stevenson, you haven't drank anything, you know, and you, tenoshinderu, bikurishimasu, you know, I'm very surprised you're able to have so much fun without being drunk. Uh, yeah, there's a culture there where, where you drink a lot and, you know, they, they, people who can't handle their alcohol even practice drinking so they can handle their alcohol. Brutal, brutal. Eat before and during drinking. Yeah, it's good. Have your yakitori, have your snack, have something in your stomach, you know, your cheese board, some fruits, what, well, fruits is sugar, but something to kind of, you know absorb that. I, I don't know the, the reasons for it. You can go to Dr. Peter Atia and he'll probably have a guest on that tells you exactly why that's scientifically true. There's plenty of resources. Determine in advance not to exceed a set number of drinks. Now this is where I say bullshit because I think there are a lot of people who can do that they were the kids that could not eat the marshmallow, you know, and wait for the reward, you know. But a lot of us aren't like that. So what we're going to do is um, have five drinks and forgot we had five drinks and have five more drinks. And by the time we've had five more drinks, we're going to be so drunk we're not counting. So forget about that one. I think I have a better approach to this. So, uh, I, uh, for me anyway. So anyway, I'll tell you that later. Um, keep track of how many drinks are being consumed. Again, that's really hard, isn't it? I mean, and people, you know, when I was in Hong Kong and you go out with European friends and they start buying bottles of wine and everybody at the table has to buy a bottle of wine. So if you have 12 people at the table, there's 12 bottles of wine. Two or three people don't drink much. So the wine goes where it goes, which is to me. <laughs> so I, I'm not counting. I'm not keeping track. <laughs> it's just there. Uh, like those uh, free flow, all you can eat, all you can drink buffets at five-star hotels. 
dangerous, my friend. It's like, let's do the champagne, let's do the reds, let's do the whites, let's do the grappa. Of course, all of this can be really fun and can bring you closer to your friends, which is the utility of it, right? And it's been around forever, as you know, alcohol. Avoid drinking games. Uh, I think that's one I can agree with. I, I've never been much on drinking games like Pong or something, beer Pong. I, I don't do that. I'm not one who, like, every time the guy says uh, Trump's a Nazi, you know, take a shot or something like that. It's kind of not my thing. I have no problem, you know, gaming my drinking all by my lonesome. Have a friend let you know when you have had enough. Now, again, this is good, but do you listen to your friend when you're drunk? <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, Bouliante, you've had too much to drink, man. You really should slow down. Ah, come on, I'm okay. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, do you listen to your friend when you're drunk? I think that's good if, you, if you're already moderating. So if you're the kind of person who understands that you, you can drink three to five glasses of wine, period, that's it. Or three glasses and you, this is what I do, I time it out. I have a glass of wine that gets me nice and warm and fuzzy and friendly. Then the, the second two, I just take my time with them. I just don't, I don't finger them, I don't hold the glass. I just let it sit on the table. And from time to time, I have a sip and I, I like the wine, I like the way it tastes, so I let it, you know, swirl around in my mouth for 10, 20 minutes. No, I'm kidding. Like chewing your food like a good, um, uh, what was that uh, diet in India? I forgot. But you have to chew your food a lot, you know, because most of the digestion happens with the juices in your mouth, don't you know? And if you do that, you're going to live an extra 20 years. So anyway... Uh, alternate non-alcoholic with alcoholic beverages. This one is a two thumbs up for me because if you're going to do that three to five glasses of wine and you, you're in a party that think you think, I don't want to be hanging out here for a few hours with these people. This is fun. Um, definitely, you know, have, have, a, have a couple of glasses of wine to get warm and fuzzy and happy. And then between those two and the third one, just wait an hour, you know, just don't drink, have some uh, soda water. I love, you know, uh, soda water. Here there's, there's really good mineral water, sparkling mineral water, and I love it. It's great stuff. And I can drink a lot of that, and since I love to drink, I just pound those for an hour. And it works, it works. Then you can have another two glasses over time, and it all winds up being real com comfortable. Uh, place, uh, uh, pace drinks to one or fewer per hour. Yeah. I mean, that will work if you moderate, if you do the other thing we just talked about, in my opinion. But if you're going to just drink for effect that first half hour, you're not counting after that. So it, that all just goes way out the window. So, let me have a sip of coffee. Uh, so, what do I do? Um, yeah, I fail a lot. That's what I do. But in general, when I'm drinking responsibly and taking care of myself, first of all, I don't drink every day. At my age, that's a mistake, and it was a mistake when I was 25, and I, I never ever did it. As I explained, I, I replaced drinking with sports and other activities that didn't involve social drinking, which helped a lot. So, um, yeah, don't, don't drink every day. Uh, choose your moments. If you are from a tradition that limits drinking, or fasts from drinking, like Orthodox Christianity or something. Obviously, if you're a Muslim, you have no problem. I have friends who are Muslim, but they drink once in a while, you know. Uh, that helps. But if not, if you're just like your regular secular guy who's friendly and social and loves to drink, 
I would say, um, yeah, just stay away from it most of the time. And then when you do drink, you know, follow whatever rules work for you so that you don't kill yourself. Um, that's a big one. Uh, the other one is that's really big for me is I'd rather drink during the day. And by the time I go to sleep at night, I'm pretty much sober. So do something like take a walk or whatever, if you can, uh, to burn off the alcohol in your system so that when you go to sleep, you know, you've had some herb tea or whatever, a couple of glasses of water, uh, a few hours before you go to sleep and you've hydrated, hydrated and you've hydrated yourself your body and you're more or less sober when you hit the pillow and that's going to really limit the damage I think from your responsible drinking um, yeah the other thing is seriously you have to set limits you have to know your limit and you have to be very very religious about that <laughs> strict with yourself because you know that if you have two bottles of wine, you're not counting after that. You know it. You've experienced that many, many times. So don't fool yourself. Um, it's five glasses, period. You know, that's it. That's the rule. Or if you're really a strong drinker and you're spacing it out during a wedding or an event or whatever, maybe it's two bottles, but you know you never go to three. So I love soju. I love Korean food and I love soju. And soju is a very strong uh, alcohol. I think it's made with potatoes and rice sometimes, but it's kind of like a very fragrant, very tasty kind of Korean vodka, but it's not as strong. I think it's 19%, anywhere from 13 to 20% by volume. And so it's very strong, but it goes really, really well with Korean barbecue. <laughs> and I love that stuff. And you can, you can have a small six ounce bottle, or I don't know, yeah, a small bottle of, uh, shochu or soju sorry shochu is japanese that's good too <laughs> but a small bottle of that will get you lit up and the second one you're drunk okay and the third one you're finished i mean you're blind and i'm a i'm a strong drinker okay i'm not telling you you can't do better but it's strong stuff i think most people can have a small bottle of that with their korean barbecue but in korea uh, when I was there, they can drink a lot of that, and so can I. And it can be very, very, very dangerous. That's blackout territory. So if you've experienced that, you know it, just don't do it. You, you, you just have to let yourself know that it's not going to happen. See this cute little vial here? It's crack, rock cocaine, the most addictive form. You think it's the glamour drug of the 80s? Well, that's the point of this fronted little reminder. It can kill you. And if you've got to die for something, this sure as hell ain't it. In the next few months, the motion picture industry and theater owners will be bringing you a series of messages like the one you just saw. I don't think anybody will miss the point. The thrill can kill. The drug dealers need to know that we want them out of our schools, neighborhoods, and our lives. And the only way to do that is to take the customers away from the product. Say no to drugs and say yes to life. Of course, your local drug pusher may tell you a little something different about these drugs. And who you believe is up to you. But then again, if you go ahead and try them, at least it won't be out of ignorance. Just stupidity. 
What would I do if someone offered me these drugs? I'd tell them to take a hike. I'm not going to have that third bottle of, of soju. Maybe during a big party and eating fest, I can go with two. Not a problem. Having Korean barbecue and so on. It's no big deal, but don't go beyond that. Always set your limits. Know your limits. That's the most important thing. And then don't do anything when you're drinking that's dangerous. Don't throw knives. <laughs> don't chop vegetables. Don't drive. Don't ride a bicycle. I made that mistake. It's nasty. It sets you back. It's not a good thing. I was riding my bicycle, I crashed about a yard from the front door because <laughs> I was drunk. So, bad idea. I mean, we always make mistakes, we always fail. You get mad at yourself for five minutes and then think it through, you know, and don't do it again. So those are my, that's my advice. I think that's the simplest one. Don't go to bed drunk, so don't pass out, never drink so much that you pass out and if you if you did drink responsibly uh, do things before you go to bed that kind of sober you up that's extremely important and set your limits right and then just pace yourself pace yourself eat drink other beverages have a really really good time that's my advice the other one of course the big one is uh, just don't do it every day just don't I wouldn't even recommend, like, I'm going to have a glass of wine with dinner every day. Uh, that's not the thing that makes me happy. So uh, I can eat and have some, some other beverage, and I'm just fine. It doesn't have to be paired with wine. And, uh, yeah, vodka and soju, uh, very strong alcohol. you got to be very careful with it because it's easy to pound back shots of tequila and, and just forget what happened to you. All right, that's it. I'm Buliam T and I'm an alcoholic. I'm a user. Please stay safe, have fun, enjoy the life. Bacchus to the future. Buliam T out.